your recording chair. On time. Welcome uh, everyone to tonight's meeting of the East Greenwich Town Council Planning Committee. Um, lovely to uh, see you on this what's been a nice spring day. Um, Item number one on the agenda is public participation. We do have one member of the public uh, in the room with us today, uh, but I understand they, they don't wish to, to, to speak, They're here to listen and observe. Um, there was meant to be a second member of the public, but they are not here yet. So unfortunately, we are going to have to uh, move on to item number two of the agenda, um, which is apologies for, apologies for absence. I have uh, had an apology in, but have you had anything else? I no haven't problem? heard. I haven't heard from Councillor Peacock, um, but uh, he does uh, tend to send apologies usually just after the meeting starts. So I think it's probably reasonable to, to accept that uh, as he's not here, he will have sent his apologies, but I just haven't received them yet. That's right, and he is he is ex officio, isn't he? So that's right. That's right. Um, May I speak as a member of the public, please? Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot about Charles, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yes, Charles, I forgot you weren't on the list. That's on the list in front of me, and I forgot about you, sorry. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Charles Amos would like to speak. Thank you very much. I'd like to speak in favour of the conversion of East Grinstead House from commercial to residential units. East Grinstead house prices are ridiculously high. They're 16 times average East Grinstead wages. And these 124 units will help substantially lower East Grinstead house prices, or if not, that will help lower them, ceteris paribus, compared to the alternative. It will also help the council deliver on the 2,445 homes that have got to be delivered by 2031, as set out by the district plan. Given this committee doesn't want to build on brownfield or greenfield sites, this is the perfect opportunity not to build over a single square inch of East Grinstead grounds, yet still deliver 124 homes. The parking and the transport links aren't really a great concern because residents will be one minute away from the train and bus station and 334 parking spaces will be provided. Now, what about employment, which is, of course, the council's central concern in this area? I'm firmly of the belief it will make no difference to employment in the long term. And in the short term, it may even add to employment because you will have a great demand for labourers to convert the property from commercial to domestic use. Given the fact that the supply of commercial property will shrink, it will shift to the left of the supply curve. Well, you'll get higher rents, which will induce landlords over the long term to put more commercial property on the market, which will eventually shift the supply curve to the right, meaning prices will go back down to their normal level, meaning there will be no difference to commercial property in East Grinstead. Uh, or the employment made by commercial property. So I would urge this committee to back this development to lower East Grinstead house prices and mean that we don't have to build on greenfield sites. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Charles. Um, just, just one small point of order for committee to bear in mind from that, that the uh, 100 plus dwellings that would be converted there wouldn't count towards that 2000 target as they're not new builds the conversions don't actually tick off that unfortunately um point out how was wrong so just just to bear that in mind so um we were in apologies for absence i was we have received an apology for absence from councillor uh mrs mockford um i'd like to propose that we accept that apology as she is working at the hospital tonight um could I have a second for that, please? Thank mm -hmm. you. Can I have a of hands in support of that reason, please? Thank you. Chairman, yeah, can I ask the committee just to note Councillor Peacock as ex officio? Noted. 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 Item number three is to receive the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of February, 2021. Uh, this is for accuracy. I would like to propose them as correct. Could I have a second for those, please? I'll second that, Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rody. Um, any comments at all on those minutes? No, can I have a show of hands in support of those minutes, please? 
and uh, just for the record obviously we will be going in to uh, sign those once it is uh, safe and legal to do so. Uh, item four is to receive members declaration of interest. Does any member have a declaration? Councillor De Bell? Yes, um, as a member of the um, Mid Sussex District Council Planning Committee and uh, District Planning Committee, I reserve the right to change my opinion uh, should further evidence be brought before me at that time. And also regarding uh, item DM210083, the applicant Ed Castle is a friend of mine, and therefore I shall take no part in that respect. Thank you very much. Any others, Missy? No, thank you. Uh, Item number five is Chairman's announcements. It's a fairly brief Chairman's announcements, if I'm honest with you, uh, tonight, Committee. We were hopeful to have uh, had a presentation from Brookworth Homes tonight um, about the land at the back of uh, the Victoria Hospital. Um, after a meeting with the town clerk and, uh, and and myself. However, they haven't come back to us yet about that meeting. Um, all I can assume is they, they're, they're delaying. We don't know for sure um, what's going on with that. But as soon as we hear back, we'll try and get them booked in to come to a presentation uh, for you guys. What I'm hopeful is that they took so much note of everything that we said, they've gone off to redesign their plans and they come back with um, some, some even better plans. Let's, let's, let's see. I'm maybe giving us too much credit there. Chairman, but, uh, on, if I can actually update you, um, about five minutes after I spoke to you this morning, I did wonder whether you sent a text. About five minutes after I spoke to you this morning, I did get a message from um, uh, Katie Lamb, who is leading on this, and she said that they are indeed making a few changes to the, uh, the application, so they're not quite ready to submit yet and that's why um, she's uh, not ready to, to come on to the committee but uh, I suspect that in the next um, two, two or three meetings she will be ready to come back and to show all of you what it is they're planning to do and show us the changes. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, that's a great update and I, I will say committee that uh, as further feedback from that meeting um, it, it was a, a very good two-way meeting about that development um, and, and they were very 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 receptive to our, our comments and concerns um, about the pros and cons of that development. So, so hopefully they will, will, will have listened and amended that. So thank, thank you for the update. Uh, item number six is appeal decisions. Uh, there are two uh, here for you. The first one is AP 200048, which was the tower car sales site. If you remember that one, it came before us. Uh, that appeal was dismissed, which is, is positive, as we were, uh, we were quite strongly against that. Yeah. Uh, the other one is uh, AEP 200019, which was the Aldi opening times. Uh, unfortunately, that uh, has been allowed, and they do have permission granted to extend the permitted delivery times from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Sundays and bank holidays. So... Uh, I, I'm sorry for the residents that live nearby. We were, as this committee, we were against that, but obviously that, that appeal has been uh, has been allowed. So, um, item number seven is for noting it is the Mid Sussex District Council consultation on the Copthorne and Worth neighbourhood development plan. This is for the, you guys to, to note. Um, if you wish to reply, consultation closes at midnight on Wednesday, the twenty fourth of March. Um, so if you could let the clerk know by the 18th, if you've got any, or myself, if you've got any comments about that. And I think um, that could be a really important one for us to look at with the potential changes coming forward with these Grinstead and, they, and the junctures that intersect from Copthorne and Worth. So um, if I could urge committee to have a look at that and, and forward comments, that would be, be much appreciated. Otherwise, uh, I think our silence on that would be not great. Um, okay, I'm gonna just gonna share my screen, um, and we can get into uh, item number eight. Okay, Let's stick your beautiful faces over here, guys. Still see you. Thank you. 
Um, let's stop and stop. That'd be good. Hopefully you can all see the screen. Yep. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, start with licensing applications. Um, if there are any comments that want to be passed, that we can pass on to the to the licensing officer. This is uh, LI twenty one zero one four one. This is a premises license for the High Wheel Brewery, twenty three Hermitage Road, East Grinstead. This is a new premises license. Sale of alcohol eight a.m. to eight p.m. every day. And there are no comments on the portal. Um, this falls within Baldwin's. Um, Councillor Dooley, do you have any particular comment on this at all? Uh, Councillor Woodgate, I know that you had some knowledge on this, if you wanted to impart it. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, I believe um, this the gentleman here uh, has a place down in Coombe Hill Road that he's probably giving up and just wants to um, do wholesale uh sales of um his brewed beer that he has because he's also the one of the owners of the engine room so he brews the beer so he may well be brewing it or selling wholesale from his house not turning it into a pub or anything along those lines so i think it's for wholesale use only okay i i personally think that that is quite a narrow road with lots of houses uh it's almost pretty much one way street. I would have concerns about too much sales going on down there. Um, wholesale people turning up by appointment, I think would be fine, but just a general free for all, I think I would have more concern over. During lockdown, Jerry has been selling wholesale, so taking orders and then sell, delivering them from delivery van or his car. So taking orders and then going from the engine room. Okay and then taking them to people's place of residence rather than them coming to him. Seems, my, my only other thought is it is 8 p.m. on a Sunday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. people turning up to buy things from someone's house could seem quite late. That's my only, <laughs> it says every day. So I would maybe have a small concern there. I don't know if anybody else agrees with that or any other comments. No, I agree. Okay. Chairman, you can um, make that comment as part of your um, your response to the district council to say that whilst you're you're content with the the, the premises um, license being being um, awarded, um, you would have concerns if this was a um, a collection service going on till ten, uh, eight pm on a Sunday evening, and that's perfectly valid for you to put that into the, the, the licensing committee. Thank you. If we could, that would be perfect wording. Thank you, Town Clerk. Um, Town Clerk, we have had somebody just enter the waiting room. Oh, ah, that's the lady who wanted to speak. I don't know whether you're going to work now be prepared to go back as we are quarter of an hour past um, time. I have admitted her. Okay. I'll have a chat. Oh, hello, Mrs. Ball. Thank you for joining the meeting uh, today. Unfortunately, we, we have missed public participation. Uh, we were unsure whether you were wanting to speak or, or, or not, whether you were just here to, to listen to the meeting tonight. Uh, Mrs. Ball, can you hear me? I'm just going to unshare my screen, um, committee. Mrs. Bosch, can you can you hear me now? I don't think she can, Chairman. Or I think she would be. Oh, hang on. You're muted. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Um, yes, oh, and, I'm, and I am going to unmute so that you can't hear what's going on in the background. That, that, that. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so we have missed the public participation element of the of the meeting, but if you want to listen through the meeting, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, please. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to go back to share my screen, Chris. Thank you. Okay, um, we'll now move on to protected tree applications. This is the committee to make observations as because they're necessary in respect of the application set up below. 
Um, so we will often not refer these to the tree officer with no, no comment. However, um, if any ward members want to make a comment, then please raise their hand. Councillor Belsey, please. Um, thank you, Chairman. Uh, no, I would like to just raise my concern about the application of uh, DM 210500, uh, which is the felling of the three beaches at number eight, the Oaks. Um, if I might just explain my concerns, uh, because it doesn't really come through in the uh, application. Um, many of us remember the applications we've had regarding Overshore Cottage. Uh, off the Lewis Road and the applications to turn a detached house into many flats. Well, part of the reason for turning down that development was due to the effect that the development would have on the sylvan landscape of the area. And part of the reason there is a sylvan landscape to that area is due to these three trees. Uh, I appreciate we're talking about um, in the plan to replace the trees, but um, yeah, replacing those trees is not anything comparable with the sort of the, the trees that are already there. For those that don't know, they are sort of three very big trees that are visible along the Lewis Road past Sackville School. I can't say exactly how tall they are, but if you said to me they were 20 metres high, I wouldn't be at all surprised. And so obviously replacing 20 metre high trees with some beech saplings is not at all um, comparable. Uh, if they are removed, there would only be one immense tree left um, and it would have a very significant detrimental impact on the landscape. Um, just by background, the trees are part of the protection order given in 1985, prior to the construction of the oaks. Um, unfortunately, some of the other trees part of the order have succumbed and there are less and less surviving. I'm aware of a couple of neighbours who've objected to those trees being um, felled, highlighting the visual asset to the street scene. And also they're an invaluable habitat for wildlife, including rare birds and bats. As they say, a natural amenity treasured by both our community and our wildlife. Now, of course, I'm not a tree expert, and it is clear one of the trees has had some damage, possibly from a bonfire. However, it is not at all obvious where the damage and decay is, as suggested by the application in the other beaches. And the applicant themselves admits that they're not dangerous, but for some reason says a hard crown reduction or height reduction uh, is not appropriate, um, and that the trees will need work in the future. I agree with the comments made by other residents that just to chop the trees down is completely disproportionate to the damage on the trees that's currently there and that just planting new saplings in their place would result in a terrible loss to street scene and to the loss of that lovely natural habitat. I would urge a visit be undertaken by the relevant tree officer and I believe the application should only go ahead if it really can be proved that there's no other way forward for those trees and that they are dangerous dead or, or like in immediate danger of um, for, for of dying and death um so unless there is strong evidence of this which there isn't currently there's just a very very small um sentence from a, a tree maintenance person saying that they need to be felled so i would propose that we object to their felling and thus this application at the moment thank you chairman thank you very much councillor belsey on that very comprehensive uh, information on that so thank you very much um is the committee happy to to pass those those comments on to that application and with the others we will just refer with no comment to the tree officer yeah okay can i show of hands in support please yeah and just before you move on can i just please um just make committee aware particularly councillor belsey that um the tree officer is not doing visits at the moment and unless it's absolutely essential she will not be doing any site visits so I would strongly urge him please as the ward member to perhaps also take that up with the district to, as well as we will based on the comment that's just been made that um, to, to, to request a site visit or it's highly likely she won't go out. Thank you chair. Can we request that chair? Uh, yes, and I think Councillor Belsey, um, as, as a, uh, a cabinet member of Mid Sussex, maybe you could uh, see fit to make inquiries on that, because I, I do think that uh, you're highly unlikely to, in this situation, catch COVID from a tree. Or any of the other diseases that are threatened by that tree. But um, yeah, thank you. I, I, I'll make my own inquiries, but if we could say as a committee we'd request it as well, that'd be great. Thank you. Most definitely we will. Thank you. And thank you for that further information, uh, Council. Um, maybe it would be interesting actually going forward as this uh, unfurls, whether either from Councillor Belsey or from yourself, Clark, we could have an update on the, the future position of the tree officer not visiting. That'd be good to know when they uh, that changes. 
Thank you. Okay. Let's move on to the, the main bit of the, the evening, ladies and gentlemen, the bit we all came for. Um, so the first one tonight is DM21037. Uh, this is East Gritstead Sports Club, St. Hill Road. This is repositioning and raising of existing score box building, erection of adjoining storage and administration buildings. Uh, this is Herontai. So this is the, the sports club, which I'm sure you're all aware of. The, the drawings take a little bit of um, giving a head around, but this is the, the old score box, and this is the proposed new score box, which is a, a substantial increase and in improvement. But uh, this is Herontai, so uh, Councillor Odie, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I've, um, I don't have any problems with this at all. They're moving the scoreboard uh, just very slightly um, to the left um, and increasing the size of the scoreboard and the building uh, really to house um, equipment and, and use it as an administrative uh, building for when the matches are played. Um, the last time this was changed, it was literally, it was built in 1990, actually, the existing scoreboard, uh, score uh, score box building um, and uh, I, I think this is a great addition to the uh, to the club actually um, so yeah I would uh, I would vote for approval. Thank you. Can I have a second for that please? Thank you Councillor Scott. Any further comment on that? No. no. <laughs> Brilliant and I think we should be doing everything we can to support uh, the wonderful sports we have in this town so uh, thank you. I, uh, we take that to a vote please committee. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to DM21 0083. This is 56 Holt High Road. Chairman, yeah, I'm uh, just going to put Councillor de Bell in the waiting room for this one. Oh, this is the Councillor de Bell's one. Off you go, Councillor de Bell. Uh, this is garage conversion to the front of the property and side extension. Um, so this is uh, the property's location between Holt High Road and into Park Avenue. Um, this is the, the, the views here. We've got the, ga the garage being turned into a, a, a dining room, the, literally the garage door going and uh, becoming a, a room with a little roof. Um, I think, yes, they, they are the only drawings we have. So they are... Um, yeah, um, so this is this is Ash Platts. Um, now Ash Platts, remember, is not actually it just left the room. So um, would anybody like to 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 start me on this, or would you like me to do it? I am actually an Ash Platts. Oh, you are Ash Platts, are you, Councillor Belsey? I keep forgetting because you changed through my yes, time doing it. I am very very sorry. And I was only discussing you being an Ash Platts councillor earlier oh, with the I'm clerk. So poor I'm Margaret, such a new member. Yes, poor Margaret. Right. <laughs> you sorry. were Baldwin's before, weren't you? Last term, you have switched, haven't you? <laughs> was it just my imagination? You are quite correct that Mrs. Belsey is indeed an Ash Platts member now. <laughs> Excellent. Um, thank you. Right. Um, I have no problem with it. It is a narrow site. Um, the uh, neighbours are in um, agreement with it. Although it's narrower, they're using the uh, space that they had as a garage to move it into residential use. So and the side extension is tucked on the side towards the back. So I have no problem. So I support the application. Thank you. Please accept my apologies again there, Ms. Councillor Belsey. Um, can I have a second for that, please? Thank you, uh, Councillor Rowley. Any other comment on this at all? Can I have a show of hands then, please? Thank you. I want to allow the, uh, the town mayor back in, please. Uh, <laughs> We're going to remain in Ash Flats <laughs> for DM 210249. Uh, this is uh, Coppice Farm, Holt High Road. This is proposed conversion of barn to uh, four bedroom dwelling, residential dwelling. Um, 
it's a slightly interesting one this one so this is the the farm this is the the barn here off the whole tie road um this is the the current barn and that, and this is the uh the proposed addition of some bifolds windows and, and division of the building and uh i can get this to load up Being very slow to load tonight, I don't know why, but this is a land, landscape view of it in, in situ, but I don't know why it's um, frozen. Sorry, bear with me again. So, uh, Town Mayor, would you like to lead us on this one? Yeah, happy to, Joan. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of um, off the road. It's well away from, um, you know, from being um, a problem to anybody, but I have to say I'm not wild about the design. If uh, if you have a look at it, it looks like they've just converted literally uh, an old grey building. Um, however, uh, as I say, in terms of planning, uh, it's uh, no problem to anybody. It's uh, set back from the road, well back from the road, and I see no reason why on planning grounds we shouldn't uh, support approval. Okay, thank you very much. Um, could I have a second for that, please. I've got um, any other comments from committee on this one at all? Councillor Odie. Uh, thanks, Chair. Can I um, ask what the render is on the building? Is it going to stay the same? Uh, I believe from the plans it, it, it is. I think just um, for want of a better word, tart it up a bit. Yeah. Can I ask what's it, what, what it's made from at the moment? I, I honestly don't know. We don't, if, uh, I couldn't see in the spec. No. I, I actually I actually looked uh, quizzically the same as you, Steve, and uh, it doesn't give a great deal of information. It looks like uh, a sort of a hangar building, and I, I'm ashamed to say. Uh, there, there is actually, sorry, it is like a, it's vertical timber cladding. Right. Yeah, it is. With corrugated metal roof covering and grey metal windows and doors with brickwork and timber louvers. Uh, Councillor Mrs. Belsey. Thank you. Um, I would just like to um, go uh, give a little background to this. Uh, the field, it was a field um, which was purchased uh, way back in 1999 to be used purely as a small holding. And at the time when they put in for planning permission for the barn, the East Grinstead Town Clerk then, before our current one, said planning permission would never be granted. However, um, planning permission for the barn was put in in 1999, which we refused, and then Mid-Sussex refused, and then it went through on appeal. They then uh, applied to build an apron for the agricultural barn and access way, which was granted. Um, then uh, about four or five years ago, they started to cut down trees. So it's like it was a, a small holding that was purely used for uh, agricultural uh, small holding. Um, and then gradually this build up to putting in for planning permission, um, which in itself, I've tried to look at the neighborhood plan to see because it is in an area of outstanding natural beauty. And it says, um, conversion of redundant buildings so um, the bill they could never convert the barn that is on it at the moment it would have to well in my opinion um, but it says planning permission for other forms of development will be granted where the proposals are for the conversion of redundant buildings or the replacement on a light for light basis of existing buildings um, so I'm not I'm presuming that that um, it's going to fall into that category but I would draw the uh, committee's attention to the planning information produced by Mid Sussex, which is been is on the portal. I'm not sure if anyone has read it, but the comments there are long comments on um, factors regarding this planning commission, and I just read a couple of the things that they say. The planning decision should be based on an adequate site investigation 
and without sufficient information submitted with the application, it's not possible to make such a determination. And it goes on about all the, uh, pre the conditions that they're laying down about the conversion. So I, I just wanted to really draw that to the attention because it is quite there. They put a lot of limitations and subjectivities in their uh, report dated the 10th of February, 2021. So I wondered if these comments should be taken into consideration. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank you very, very much. Councillor De Bell, if you'd like to come back, please. Thank you very much. I think that's invaluable um, background information and I really thank uh, Councillor Sibelsi for that. I believe that uh, looking at this, maybe what we should be doing is rather than recommending acceptance, is allowing district council to make the decision uh, and we send it without comment. Um, okay, we, we, we can, we, well, we could do that. Um, what I think would be potentially more useful in this particular situation is, uh, well, I'm gonna, just gonna come back to Councillor Mrs. Belsey because I think being a ward member and someone that, that does live very near it and knows the history of the site, um, what would your gut feeling be that we would you want to re recommend refusal of the building um or would you want to accept but with those with with the conditions that have been stipulated with um from, from mid sussex well there are yeah the, the problem i had was when i was reading it through their comments um you know having regard to this if you are minded to permit this development this is what I'm reading. It is yeah. necessary to, to limit the future liability of the council. They're worried about contamination uh, and to ensure the site is suitable for the residential use. And then that they go on again to give various uh, re risk assessments that which need to be carried out before any building is done to ensure that the risks from land contamination to the future uses of the, la the land are minimized. It, so, you know, there is a quite serious report here that needs to be um, looked at and uh, action taken before anybody goes ahead with any planning permission. Absolutely, Mr Chairman, I actually read the same, the same thing and I forgot to mention it. There was um, a mention that a con contamination report would have to be done by the applicant. Uh, I think uh, what you say uh, and with the invaluable information from Councillor Mrs. Belsey, I think that we should, uh, I feel, uh, I'd be more happy to recommend refusal until such time as the contamination report uh, uh, is looked at and the, and the prior um, history of this particular plot uh, has been fully discussed at district. Okay. Um... <laughs> Town clerk, uh, point of order, which I think you're muted, Town clerk. I did say that uh, Councillor Rode has got his hand up, Chair. He did. Um, I just wanted, before I continue, because Councillor De Bell has put a counter proposal to his previous one, so I just wanted to know how we, how you'd like me to continue. Did he get his first one seconded? First one was seconded, yeah. It was. Yeah. Withdrawal of proposal. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so, so, yes. So, Councillor De Bell, can't we can't really amend his proposal. So, I think what he's done is he's withdrawn the original one, and now he's making a a, a he, he he's now amending it. So he's withdrawn his proposal. Okay. He's now amending, and uh, that does need to be seconded if that is what um, right. you now wish to do. Thank you. So you want you would like a, a removal of your first and a new proposal to recommend refusal subject to uh, all the all the comments about contamination that we've just been over. Absolutely, Chairman. And I, I do apologise for the confusion. That's fine. Can I just have a second for that then, please, Councillor Scott? Uh, Councillor Odie, then, please. <laughs> Thanks, Chair. Uh, I'll just remove my hand. Um, Yes, sorry. Um, can I ask uh, Councillor Mrs. Belsey um, if there are any specific particular policy numbers that 
that information that she uh, spoke about relate to? Um, and also, is there anything, if, if there is a um, contamination uh, potential, I, 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 I can't, I'm trying to find that on the district plan. I can't find it. Shall I speak? Uh, please do. Yeah. The comment from the Mid-Sussex is paragraph 178 of the National Planning Policy Framework, February 2019, states that planning decisions should be based on adequate site investigation information prepared by a competent person which demonstrates suitability for use. Without sufficient information submitted with the application, it is not possible to make such a determination. And they have then gone on to say, based on the site investigation results and the details of the risk assessment and options appraisal and remediation strategy, giving full details of the remediation measures required and are required and how they are to be undertaken. Thank you. That's great. My other concern is really the uh, development by stealth, which this clearly is, and the precedent that this is going to set um, <coughs> in other, other areas of land around the town. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think those, those comments uh, are valid, Councillor Odie, and I think um, there's not a lot we can do about that at this stage, but um, I, I, I hear you on that. Um, okay, so We've got the proposal there. Um, if nobody else has any comments, can we have a show of hands in support of refusing, please? Thank you, committee. Uh, Town clerk, I assume you're happy with all the comments that you, you've got there? My space bar isn't working. Um, uh, yeah, I've got the comments about land contamination as, as stated by Ms. Bell. Yeah, she's referring to a document which is actually already on the portal, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what she was. Perfect. Uh, can I just very quickly just say thank you there to uh, Councillor Belsey for very thorough research into that one. Thank you very much because you pulled out bits that, that I, uh, I'd actually missed. So thank you very, very much. Um, okay, the next one is DM 210386, which is one of our PNOs tonight. Uh, we have three of these in, in total. I'm going to discuss them uh, as one. In discussion with the ward members, with PNOs, we we don't have to make any any comment. They're a bit like a, 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 an LDC that we see. However, we we have made comment in the past when these have come forward, and I think it would only be be right to keep that continuity and to make make comment a, a, again. Um, the concerns that this committee have expressed in the past still still remain with this that um, the loss of, uh, of more office space in the town is, 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 is very sad and we, we really want to resist that, especially with the, the changes in, in working structures that are coming forward with people not wanting to work in London, wanting to work in more regional offices. To lose that facility from our town to the last one would, would, would be very, very bad. And uh, I think the employment loss, it, it will be huge to the town. You know, we, we've seen slowly these offices go from the Open University to all of these. It, 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 it kills the retail in the town and uh, it just removes employment opportunities for part of the community. So I think those, those comments need to go forward. I, I also, we also have huge concerns over the contamination of the building. We have huge concerns over the a huge number of extra flats that, that won't count towards any quota, they'll just be forced upon us, they won't have any significant infrastructure improvement. Yes, they, they may have parking, but the, the, the volume of cars pouring out onto the one-way system is already congested. Uh, it's just unacceptable and we, we're at breaking point with that. And uh, I know that the all members have also brought to me concerns about the actual living conditions, viability and poor design of the flats within the building. They're poorly laid out, poorly designed and, and, and not the kind of accommodation that we necessarily want to be attracting to the town. 
So if committee is happy, I propose that we, we continue those comments on with the P&O. It's not a case of recommending refusal or, or approval at this, but uh, putting those comments forward. Um, does anybody have any other comments that they wish to add to any of those? If I, might, if I can, um, Fraser. Yes, Councillor Osborne, please do. Yeah, I mean, the other knock-on effect, of course, is the effect on the, sh on the shops and the restaurants, because lots of these office workers are, would, would use the shops, they would use the restaurants, so it affects other employment as well. Um, and I rather thought that Mid Sussex had said that they were keen on keeping a section of offices in the town, and I thought it was this section that they were, in fact, um, going to resist turning into um, accommodation. You never know, perhaps they've changed their mind on this one and are all in favour of it now, but that was their policy not long ago. They were supposed to be um, aware um, of the impact of the loss of jobs and the loss of office space in this instance. We've gone from a huge amount down to... I mean, if you were looking for a balanced town, you haven't got much chance of it anymore, really, because the damage has already been done. But I think this is the final straw, because this is, this is the only office space that's of, of any substantial amount that's left in the town. I know things are changing, but we've already lost a lots of lots of office space, which in fact um, would account for that. So um, while people, it may it may affect the, the price of housing. I doubt if it will, because we just it, just people will uh, will come from outside to take up the the slack in the town. But I think it certainly will co will affect the cost of um, office or commercial commercial rents, because there's going to be such a dearth of them and. Um, in the past, there's always been a situation where kids could leave school and they could get a job locally. I don't think that is the case anymore. They're going to have to travel out. Now. And how they do that, I don't know. Um, and I think that's a great shame. You want to, you really want, ideally, a town ought to have jobs locally where people can be a part of the community and they can work locally and they can shop locally. And they're not people who go out at dawn and come back at dusk. And that's the big danger in this. Um, and of course, it's the younger people who will really suffer from this. Um, we heard earlier from um, our councillor, who's not on the committee, talking about um, people who um, who didn't have homes and um, and uh, you know and looking at it from their point of view. But what about the people, the school leavers who don't have jobs? You know, um, educated kids ending up not with reasonable prospects, but ending up sort of in dead end jobs. You know, and it's not really. And he was talking about what temporary work for labourers. Well, that's a very poor exchange for permanent work in offices with careers. So uh, I can't see us being out to do much about this. The odds are against us from all sides, but um, I do think some kind of protest and some opinion on this ought to be stated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Osborne. I'll just, just, um, we've got two other people on the speak, but I sort of uh, support two of those statements. Well, I used to own a shop uh, in the high streets in town, and we saw gradually that as the retail units closed, especially down Cantaloupe Road, um, all, the, all the office spaces, office workers coming into town to buy their lunch would, would shop in the shops as they went. Um, they, they didn't, and that we noticed the footfall dry up massively because of that. So I completely support your comments. Um, so yeah, it's, it's such so sad. Uh, we had Councillor De Bell and then Councillor Scott. That's very kind, thank you, Chairman. Yes. Um... I, I think we're all totally um, in agreement with Councillor Osborne. And uh, there's a couple of sides to this. First of all, um, the, the people who uh, normally use these offices have, have all but just sort of melted away. And uh, the second thing is that some of these offices are useful for people who are now working from home but uh, need a proper office space to actually go to in the town. So, uh, but the big problem is with a government that gives the, um, the, the, the transfer of office space into accommodation uh, so easily and people making use of that. I mean, the government do it for the right reasons, I'm sure, but the people are making use of that to take every available office space, as Councillor Osborne said, and that's, I think we all, we all, we're all very concerned about that. But the other thing is uh, two aspects. If you've only got two offices within a block, uh, it's counterproductive for the people that own those blocks to only have two offices 
used when the rest of them are just lying empty. And the other thing is, uh, I, I hope it's not the case, but I, I have heard where people are turning away office business in order that they can actually sell these things off. All these things are considerations for us because this is our town. Um, but unfortunately, those uh, are the sort of things that happen. And they just can't leave office spaces um, totally empty to, to, to just dilapidate. Uh, and, and that's why this sort of thing's happening. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Scott. I do agree with every, every, with every everybody's comments so far. Um, the one thing I looked at was the impact it's going to have on the town's well-being, i.e. this is going to bring an awful lot of people, an awful lot of children, and the dentists, doctors and schools are overwhelmed. I mean, we've somehow got to accommodate this huge amount of people coming into our town. It isn't easy. There's going to be other huge building sites going to be built on the edge of town, possibly, and it's all going to add up in the long run. And I do agree with you, uh, Chairman, about the, um, the amount of cars coming out onto the one-way system. It's bad as it is, and, and, it, and that could be dangerous, but I just think the impact that will have on the dentists, doctors and schools is quite huge. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, there have been talk from Mid Sussex about from some Mid Sussex councillors about wanting to do something about this. Um, however, I do have a fear that that is too little, too late, as this has been rumbling on, as the town clerk said, for at least five years. So uh, I will be very surprised if, if anything does come of it. So, uh, but hopefully, uh, we'll put our comments forward, and, and hopefully, so they, they they may get listened to. So, um, our committee okay for me to put those comments forward on, on our behalf. Absolutely. Sure support. Okay, thank you. So that will apply to all the uh, the PO applications of which there are three on the agenda tonight. Right. Um, let's move on to an old favourite in inverted commas. Uh, DM 210389. This is land to the rear of King's House, 13 Cantaloupe Road. This is erection of two residential one bedroom dwellings. Um, this is a site that, if you remember, the, the conversion of, of King's House, another office block into flats, that then went a step further and wanted an, uh, an extension to its roof, which came before planning. Um, and part of that was the provision of the car park, which they've now subdivided and had several applications to try and build more dwellings on the car park. This is, I think, the third or fourth one we've, we've, we've seen come forward. Um, here is the, the, the plans of what they want to put. Here's a, an artist's impression of what they want to, to build. Um, but I, I, we, we've seen this, so I'm going to pass this to uh, Councillor Woodgate, if you wouldn't mind to uh, discuss. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, for the same reasons as before, really, the car parking spaces were uh, already allocated and now they're take, trying to take them back. Yeah, we've already said it's over development of the site. Um, they've They've gone through this many, many times and we've said the same thing and I would push for um, refusal of this. I think they, they, they're they just trying to push and push and push and there's going to be less parking. Cantaloupe Road at the weekend is an, and in the evenings is an absolute nightmare and this is not going to help in the slightest and is not going to have any um, effect on house prices in East Grinstead. So I would like to recommend refusal. Thank you. Can I have a second for that? Councillor Scott. Yep. Um, any further comment on this? Councillor Ovi. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, no, uh, uh, Council Gate said pretty much everything. Um, car parking comes under EG12. Um, so that is a, a, a massive issue. Uh, and actually, the, the amount of cars on Cantley Road as it is, it is really quite astronomical. Um, I would say that um, EG12 um, does state that um, 
planning permission will only be granted where vehicle parking provision is in accordance with West Sussex County Council. And if the developer is thinking that, well, it's centre of town, nobody's going to need a car, that's not quite, that, that won't ever happen. So whatever, I disagree that um, that uh, this, the, the developer thinks that there's no need for parking in this particular development. Thank you. I think that's a, a very valid point. There's no parking in this development and it is taking away parking from another development. Um, this, this developer has already told me in the past that they weren't going to build on this site. And in fact, they've turned the site into a complete rubbish dump, which I have reported to uh, district councillors for environmental health because it is atrocious, the site that they've left it in. It needs to be cleared and turned back into car parking. It's as simple as that. Uh, Councillor, did you have one last thing you wanted to say? Quick? Yes, sorry, Chair, thank you. Um, I wondered whether we could get the um, minutes of the meeting that was held when they put they asked her that for permission to extend for another floor in that building and the proviso was that there were um they were to um leave the car parking uh, space as it is there was there was some sort of provision for it and i wondered whether there was something in writing for it which, which minutes for those councillor Odie, please I, to be fair uh, town clerk i i i, 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 can't, I can't remember, remember when that planning commission for the top floor floors. came through so it's Mid Sussex District Council minutes. They, I think, better than the minutes would actually be the original application for the extension of King's House. Uh, sorry, Chairman, if, if, if I don't know which meeting we're talking about, I can't find minutes. I understand, I understand that way. <laughs> If, if it's, are we, are you asking me to look at the minutes for planning decision from Mid Sussex District Council for when it, when this went know. forward? Do you know how I find them? No, I, I'm quite happy to look to look to look them up. I'm just want to know where I'm looking. I don't. I can't, if this is meant from. This is something that was mentioned when the um, they first put a planning application through for this particular site. Um, I think two years ago or 18 months ago and I remember uh, councillor Mrs Mockford um, mentioned it at the time that there was some form of uh, proviso in uh, the application um, for the the additional floor of flats on on the king's house uh, Tom, Tom. Yeah. do you want to know do you want to love me Oh, what you got? Go on, um, give, me, give me something I can work with. <laughs> we sent the email of our response on the 18th of May 2020. So the meeting 18th of May 2020. And 18. 18, 2018. That's brilliant. I, I, I'll, I'll find it. Thank you. <laughs> um, we... Just for reference on that, we recommended refusal. The committee felt this zone development of the site, access road along the Swartzman pub is dangerous for increased use. Uh, and we cited DP 29 regarding noise nuisance. Um, but that did include the car parking. So, yes, we can find those minutes, Councillor Rowley, and use that to support it. Okay, can I have a show of hands to recommend refusal then, please, committee? Uh, we'll skip past the P&Os as we've already dealt with them. Um, Temple Coombe Cottage. Chairman, you should be going again. Temple Coombe Cottage. Yep, yep, I'm back to it. So this is uh, DM 210394. This is Temple Coombe Cottage, Coombe Hill Road. Proposed field access into land adjoining host dwelling. Sorry, I've got so many screens up with different things on that I lost. I lost my place momentarily. Um, this is the ac new access point from Coombe Hill Road into the into the field. Uh, Councillor Odie, would you like to discuss this? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, so uh, this is uh, an application to. Um, 
build access from Coombe Hill Road into um, a field. Um, there was a, one letter of objection, but many um, letters of, um, uh, uh, of approval from residents and also from the uh, Coombe Hill Road Trust trustees. Um, it's going to be that the field is going to be used for um, uh, cattle for cattle. So um, it's just really to give the um, owner of the land better access to uh, keep the field in working order. Um, so uh, I'm I'm very happy to uh, to approve this. Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. My dog wanted to get out. <laughs> Could I have a second for that, please? Oh. Well. Thank you, Councillor Osborne. Um, are there any comment on this at all? I'm not sure. Can I have a show of hands in support, please, committee? Thank you. Uh, now we can skip past the PNOs and we can go to uh, DM 210432. Uh, this is 24 Lodales Close. Uh, just for noting, this was on twice on the um, on the, uh, the the agenda, so in, in error, so we're only dealing with it once. Um, this is front and rear dormers and conversion of attic space to habitable accommodation. Um, let's zoom up here for you. This is the uh, this is Lodos close. This black bits here show the uh, the proposed dormers at the front and rear, uh, and these. It is a day of simpli sorry. It is a day of simplistic drawings today, showing the front and uh, and rear dormers, and their proposed uh, expansion from the front and, and, and side. Uh, Councillor Dooley, please. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm really, I'm really don't like this one. I'm really torn on it because. I don't think we really stand much of a chance to oppose this because I don't think we have a planning leg to stand on really. Um, but I think that the front dormer is just just totally at, not within keeping. The rear dormer is a lot better looking. But I, still, I think this is quite, you know, there's no clear guide on what they're actually going to be using this for. This is a huge house already. Um, I don't really know what they why they're going in the loft for starters, but I just think that this isn't a great looking piece of design. Um, there's, there, there is a house next door that's got Velux in it. The house directly next door has got Velux in the front, nothing on the back. Um, so I, I'm just really torn on it, but I mean, I, I don't see we've got any strong case to object it, but so I, I guess I, I propose no objection to this. You know, we, we I don't really want to, I just don't, I don't like it if I'm honest, but that, maybe that's just my personal opinion. I just think it's, it doesn't really, it's not really improving the street scene, but there's no objections from neighbours. It's just, uh, uh, maybe it's the simplicity of these designs have not really helped my decision. Um, but I just, I just, I just don't know where to go with it really. I just don't, I don't think we have a strong case to oppose it, but I just, I don't really want to say, put my name to sort of approve this design. Uh, Councillor Dooley, if you if you if you wished, I I I, I agree with you. I, I struggle with getting a clear picture of what this uh, what this dwelling will look like from these from these yeah. very simplistic drawings. What the materials they're going to be using, how it's blending with the rest of the house. Um, if if you're unhappy with it, you you could if you wanted to say that we, we didn't that due to the the, the poor description and and, di and diagrams and drawings we 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 felt we couldn't make a comment at this time yeah um, I mean, if, if, if you look the, at the rear one the poor drawings if you look at the rear one it's, it, it sort of looks like they've tried to put a little bit more design effort you've got a little bit of pitch in the roof but the one on the front looks like a very 1970s block just coming out the front of what is quite a, br a pretty building when you when you drive yeah. down that close there are a lot of very nice buildings down there nice houses and I just think this is just going to be from what I can see in this thing it just looks like a, a block being stuck out the front like a lego block being stuck on the front of it really with windows in it town so, clock yeah I'm really town I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> it, 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 it how many okay ever so ever so not feedback wind from yours um <laughs> is there anything we can do to, to bounce back to say the drawings we can't make a clear decision 
Yeah, you can say whatever you so wish, um, Chairman. So um, you can you can say that uh, um, the, the 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 poor design of the drawings um, uh, means that the committee declines to comment at this time. Um, what you can't do, and as we've said before, is is you can't uh, require the district to ask for better drawings in order for it to come back. So the chance are it won't come back. But uh, you you are completely within your rights to say we're we're not you know we're not prepared to comment on this. It's it's we we don't we don't particularly like it, but we just don't feel that we're getting a very good feel from it. You say that. Well, in, well, in, in some, some respects, respects, it does well 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 Sorry, Julia, I've had to I've had to mute you um, because whenever Dean speaks, we get terrible feedback from you when you're not muted. Thank you. I thought <laughs> it was my space. No. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> look at I'm, that. I'm really torn about whether to actually propose this for rejection on poor design because I just think that front design is awful. I mean, I'm not so opposed over the back bit it looks a bit more in keeping but the front one i just think it's just not it's just poor design it just looks like they're just sticking something on there so they can get a bit of access up in the loft and i don't understand why they really, off because that house is huge if you're not it's happy wrong. with the design and you don't like the design then you could recommend refusal on uh on, on poor design <laughs> you can easily put that in if you want to yeah let's let's go with that for the moment for that front one. but happy to consider it if they come back with a more concise design. So poor, poor, poor design. Um, can yeah. I have a second for, for, for that, please? Councillor Scott. Yeah. Any further comments at all? Okay. Um, can I have a show of hands in support on recommending refusal on poor design? That's carried. Thank you. For your help. Please maybe please maybe employ a better architect next time. <laughs> um, Other than his kids. Yeah. And I think that 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 shows is a message to go out from really that if you are putting planning application in, spending money on getting really good plans that can help you visualise and detail plans makes such a difference to uh, to your application. Uh, right, the next one. <sighs> I'm getting bored of saying this number, DM 210029, 12 Harwood closely squinted. We've seen this quite a lot recently. This is raise existing ridge and convert roof space with new rear facing dormer window. These are amended plans received on the 16th of uh, this month. Um, obviously this has taken out the, 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 the dormers. This is just a, 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 an increased ridge height and new new Velux in the in the roof. Um, this is Heron Ties, so Councillor Odie. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, so background on this, um, it's come through twice already um, and was refused. Um, the amended plans now are um, actually the ridge the roof line is actually higher than the amended plans from previous from December. Altogether, um, so I, I personally have a problem with raising the, the, the roof line of those houses for several reasons. It's in an elevated position and also none of the other houses, uh, I mean it would stick out like a sore thumb um, because none of the other houses on Holds Close have, have a, a similar height roof line. Um, there's a number of objections on the portal, uh, quite a number actually, um, and I, I, I think that because of the topography of the site um, and the, the the raising of the of the roof line, I, I, I'm I'm just not happy with it in terms of the um, location. I think it materially affects the the properties in the road, and it's a, a, a overbearing um, as well. Uh, I would, I would ask the committee to refuse this. Thank you. Could I have a second for that, please, committee? 
Council of Woodgate. May I just add, Chair, sorry, obviously on the yes. grounds of DP26 and EG3, um, scale and height of uh, the surrounding area. Uh, and and um, also it, it does it does mean that there's going to be a significant impact on privacy and outlook of the residents in that lo in, in and around that house on Stevenson Drive particularly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think an interesting point that Councillor Oni you made in discussions about this was almost when we are moving the building line of a, a property forward we uh, are generally unhappy. This is moving, almost moving the building line of this property up. All the other houses are, are in line and this house would suddenly just jump up above the rest. So, um, yeah. Are there any further comments on this at all? Okay, can we show of hands a recommend refusal on those grounds? Thank you. Committee, you are in a refusal mood tonight. Uh, DM 210213, this is 25 Holtai Road. This is loft conversion with dormer window uh, to the rear to create a first floor, two part story, part single story extension to the front and side. Um, so this is uh, showing the south elevation, showing the, the new extension to the side there. Shows the change to the to the rear. Here we've got also the front row. We've got a new dormer and extension. Right, yeah, they're the ones that are, are the primary ones. This shows it. Uh, about this dotted line here shows the new area. Uh, Akpax, Councillor Mrs. Belzy, would you like to? Thank you. Um, is it, I found it difficult to see, obviously, because um, the loft conversion, I haven't got any real problem with it. It was just, um, no, I haven't got any real problem with it. I suggest that we accept it. Um, I think some of the other councillors may have a comment who have more knowledge of that particular area. I wonder, I would appreciate Councillor Scott um, making a comment on it for me. Before, oh, Councillor, um, Scott, before Councillor Scott comes in, um, Councillor Spody, uh, we need to obviously make a recommendation and second okay. it. Um, okay. Would you like to make a recommendation to uh, recommend approval? Is, is that, you're asking me? Yeah, as the ward member. Yeah. Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Can I have a second for that, please, Mr. Okay, Councillor the bell. Uh, Councillor Scott, would you like to come come in with with, with views on it? Um, well, I do agree, with Margaret. Um, the only thing I can see if they if this is some sort of loft conversion, which which it looks like it is. Um, the windows look ad adequate. Uh, for a start, I didn't think that. You know, uh, the windows weren't going to be adequate within it, but um, what is that um, frontage, frontage going to be? Is that timber? Uh, hanging plain tiles oh. uh, to match the existing roof texture and finish. Okay. So they're, ble they're blending with the existing. They're blending in. Yeah. Well, it's quite a nice extension and... Um, I would agree with uh, Councillor Bouncy. I would, I would actually accept it. I'm, I'm, I mean, I know all the houses along there because I was uh, born and bred in that area, and I think that's why she asked me. I know I would um, okay. accept it. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Councillor Odie, and then Councillor Bell. Thanks, Chair. Um, can I just ask? Uh, is that semi-detached? Yes. Uh, so there's no, there are no objections from the neighbour. No. Thank you. Councillor Bell. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, I think um, what these, uh, what, what the occupants are trying to do is make the best of what is a semi-detached property. And that they're adding a bedroom and they're, they're utilising the available space uh, in quite a harmonious way. They're using 
the same sort of brickwork um, uh, as Councillor Mrs. Belsey says. I think um, on the balance, I think that they're doing the best with what they have available. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I have a show of hands in support then, please, committee? Thank you. Uh, just for record and clarity, uh, the town clerk is suffering some internet uh, connectivity issues, so her camera is off, but she is still here, so best behaviour please remains. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, oh, we're going to move to Imberhall for DM21. Uh, 0251. This is eight the Sayers. This is breakfast area with storage area below, along with extended porch and cloakroom with study area above. Um, so this is the property. This is the extension to the to the front of the property. Um, and we can see it from the plans here. Little porch is going to extend. Um, and get a new uh, breakfast area and, 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 and WC there. Um, so this is uh, in Hull. So Councillor Osborne, would you like to have a go? Yeah. Um, have there been any comments from neighbours or any difficulties and objections? No, nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. It looks pretty unobtrusive to me. It's um, forward of the building line, but that seems to be happening more and more. I don't know if that's still a still a reason for refusing permission. Um, if there's no problem with it locally, then um, I don't have too much of a problem with it either. So I'll probably vote for that then. Okay, thank you. Can I have a second for that, please? Um, I'll second that. So. Um, yeah, just to touch on that point, there are two other buildings in that line there that have got properties to the same extent moving forward here. You can see the house next door has got a porch and the house at the end has got a, a forward extension. So uh, I think that, that has already been set. So um, any other comments on that at all? No, not at all. Can I show of hands then, please? Thank you. Uh, right, DM21-0543, this is 27 Windmill Lane. Uh, this is proposed first floor side extension over existing garage and conversion of garage into part habitable and part storage space. So this is one of the, the newer build houses on, on Windmill Lane opposite, opposite the park. This is the rear of the property. This is the, the, the garage that is mentioned. Um, here are the existing plans of the garage, and here is the, the new extension sort of over the garage and to the side at the, at, at the back. Um, this is Baldwin's, so Councillor Dooley, please. You nearly threw me that photo you, you had there of it, to be fair, but because um, I look at it from the front. Um, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> That really threw me. Um, no, I, I don't really have any issues. There's no no concerns from anyone on the portal. Um, I think it's quite a nice extension. I think it's adding some nice space um, and they're retaining some storage, which is good. So I've, I'm happy to propose this for approval. Okay, thank you. There's a picture in the front. Sorry, I, I missed a picture. No, no, that's off. fine. There's a, I, I there's I a picture from the front. I've driven past it. That's why it just threw me a bit. I was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> Let's see it from the back. How did you get that? Um, <laughs> No, they're um they're on the they're on the there's a design access statement on the portal with some photos in. Fair enough. Um, can I have a second for that then, please, can we see? Thank you, Councillor Scott. Any further comments at all? No, oh, it's fine. Can I show of hands of support, please? Thank you. Uh Staying in Baldwin's for DM 210582. This is Tanglewood Highfield Road. This is proposed uh, front porch and single storey side extension. So this is on the corner here of, of Highfield Road and, uh, and Lingfield Road. Uh, I think you can quite clearly see the new uh, the new extension to the to the side there and some uh, amendments to the front. Um, I can zoom up on them if you wish. 
it is the existing. And here are the new uh, proposed. And to put it in context, there should, the yellow bits are the, the new bits and the new extended porch. Uh, Councillor so Dooley, again, please. Yeah, um, I, I driven past again. It's, it's, cut, it's kind of using a bit of wasted space down the side there. It still has side access from both sides, actually. So um, it's, it's, it's adding, it it's, looks like it's adding like an annex sort of thing, a downstairs annex, the way they've designed the internal layout as well. Um, I've got no concerns. I don't think there's any, because it's it's in the existing building and it's there's access through through the existing one. I don't see there's any concerns with it being an annex. I'm, I'm not massively up on annex laws and stuff like that about usage, but from what I understand, Understand when I did do a little bit of research into it that as long as it's accessible from the existing building, there's no concerns on you know it being rented out or anything like that. So um, I don't think we would be able to comment on that from planning anyway. But no, I think it's a nice extension. I think it's a good use of the space that they have there, and I'm happy to support approval, proposed approval. Thank you. Could I have a second, please? Oh. Any comments, committee? Can I show hands and support them, please? Thank you. It's a big house on a big plot there. I think it's, it's, it's loads of room around it. Definitely. Um, staying in the hall now for DM 210592. This is 5 Gardenwood Road. Uh, this is proposed single story rear extension. So here is the, here is the, the, the dwelling. Here is the proposed new footprint. Uh, Here is the property uh, from the rear. Here is the new proposed extension, giving a kitchen and diner with look what looks like a couple of uh, lantern skylights above. Uh, this is Inverhorn. I'll start us off on this one. Yeah, you can see the, the lanterns here. Um, if I'm honest with you, Committee, this is a prime example of the proposals that I brought to group about changing some of the planning to ones where we can just uh, not have to worry too much about it. Uh, it's a single story rear extension that is affecting nobody. It's adding nice space to the house. Um, I have absolutely no problem with it, so I would recommend that we support this recommend approval. Oh, so have a second. Thank you, Councillor Osborne. Any comments second. at all? No, not at all on this. I have a show of hands in support, please. Thank you. Um, going to town for DM 210593. This is 2A Blackwell Road. This is two story side and front extension, first floor extension over existing porch with alterations to porch. Um, so, this is the property on the corner of Blackwell and, and Cranston. This is on, in the corner here. This is the uh, existing front. And this is the, the proposed and the existing rear and proposed. Um, and here's some, some aerials for you as, 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 as well. Uh, this is town. Which one of my town councillors would like to start me on this one? Councillor Scott? Yeah, um, I have looked at this and, and we discussed this. Um, because the, uh, because the rear seems to be going up. It, but the first problem was it was on the corner. And was that going to be a problem? And I don't think it is. Um, the side extension, I think, is quite sympathetic. And I'm looking at it, you know, I have looked and looked at this today and I can't see any reasons why I can't actually support this. Okay, thank you. So you would recommend approval? I would. Okay. Can I have a second for that, please? Thank you, Councillor Woodgate. Any other comment on this at all? Councillor Odie. Uh, you're muted, Councillor Odie. Still muted. <laughs> you're, you're, you're still, you're still, you're still muted, sir. We need now is Jackie Weaver. We've got to meet. Sorry, people. Sorry, folks. <laughs> uh, is that the uh, owner's lawn on the front there to the side? 
Uh, I'm going to launch to the front. If you, if you look at the... Um, yeah, so, here. Yeah, so that bit of green area to the side of that house, is that... No, is that this it? is uh, the public verge. Right. Okay. Thank you. I just want to get a, a feel for it. It's quite... Do you know where we're, as we're going down towards the... Um, the Blackwell Hollow roundabout is down down here. Yeah. You go down. Yeah. There's a massive tree at the back chair. I wondered uh, what the owners were going to be doing about that. Uh, no mention of the tree that I can that I've looked at or I've read into. Okay. I would I would say uh, sort of furthering on from Councillor Scott's point of view, I I, I think this is a really really interesting and nice bit of architecture for a house that is is quite prominent actually. Um, and is, is quite, uh, I, I don't want to sound rude, but a kind of fairly uninspiring bit of original architecture to become something that is a fairly attractive bit of architecture. And I, th I think it will, will raise that corner. So I've got, I've got no problem with this. And all that are different down that road anyway. Yeah. On that side of the street, they're all different. They've they all got their, so own, can I have, their own feature. Can I, have a show of hands in, can I have a show of hands in support of that application, please? Thank you. I look forward to them building that, in fact. Uh, right. Uh, DM 210598. This is 50 Woodbury Avenue. This conversion of second floor roof space to form bedroom and en suite. So uh, this is the property all tucked off here. And uh, this is the, the aerial plans and the existing and proposed first floor. This is the, the new dormer to the, uh, to the north and uh, little Veluxes to the south. Um, Ashplatz, um, Councillor the Bell, would you like to? Happy to, Chan. I think it's, uh, it's um, a great use of existing space to create uh, more, more utility. It's not causing any problems to anybody, and there are no objections, and therefore I'm happy uh, to recommend um, that we recommend uh, approval. Thank you. Can I have a second for that, please? Thank you. Uh... Right. Any other comments on this at all? Not at all. Can I show up hands in support? Uh, we've got an LDC here uh, in Athlats. That's for noting, please, committee. Noted. Noted. Uh, okay, so we've got DM 210651. This is 60 to 62 London Road. Uh, this is permanent use of existing loading bay for external seating for London Road Bar and Grill. So I think we're probably all very aware of this particular, and this is the loading bay that has currently got the orange bollards. This is the application to put a new curb in, so it will remove the drop curb, and to uh, actually have a permanent seating area out the front of London Road, Bard and Grill. Uh, this is town, Councillor Woodgate, would you like to please start me off? Not really. Um, um, you really don't want to, by, yeah, I'm really torn by this one just because it's being a permanent and although I want to help, we want to help the small, the businesses of the town and things, it does have a knock on effect with parking and things down that way. So very torn, I'll be I, honest. I would point out that it's a loading bay, not a parking bay. Yeah. No, right. I, I, I'd like recommend approval for this one because I want to help the small businesses. And as you're right, most people just chuck the car in there on a Saturday and leave it there and put the park anywhere lights on and hope to get away with it. So I'm going to support the local business and push for approval on this one. OK, can I have a second for that, please? That's what Scott. Any further comment on this at all? Uh, Councillor Dooley, Councillor Odie and then Councillor DeBell. 
Um, I was just, I, I must have, I haven't looked into it a great deal, but I wonder if were there any sort of challenges on losing that loading bay because you do have sort of a number of shops potentially over the, you know, over the road that might, and on this side that might, you know, lose out if that loading bay goes. I just wondered if there'd been any feedback on that at all. Yeah, there are, there are mixed. I mean, I think Councillor Woodgate's uh, opening on this pretty much maybe sets the mood generally yeah. for this, that there are, totally. there, are, there, are, there are lots of comments on the portal for and against. Uh, and, and I think that, that really does set the mood. And there is a loading bay opposite. Yeah. And I think this loading bay was mainly used by the owners of Bar and Grill to park their cars in anyway, it seemed. Um, <laughs> I, th I guess the other I, thing is, is this, is this setting a precedent and, ha you know, it's controlling this and losing kind of, losing control of the town and these kind of, because I think we need to support the businesses, but it's, it's how we, it's how we can kind of manage if there's any other areas that might want to do similar things, looking uh, you at know, the other, for, the, yeah. for the outside seating. No, I agree. I agree. So um, some of the other parking bays around the town, most of them aren't in lay -bys. There's one, one opposite, which is Martell's. Mm -hmm. um, there's... Uh, but most of the other unloading bays are actually just squared off sections or painted off sections in the roads. For example, outside mm -hmm. coal, uh, the bookies, coals, corals, sorry. Yeah. Coral. They're, they're actually, they're, 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 there's no way you could turn that into a seating area. I think yeah. realistically, this is just, possibly the only one off, other, other than Martell's, but I really can't see Martell's going for this sort of okay, thing. Guys, guys we've got Councillor Odie, Councillor Odie's got a question, and then Councillor De Bell has a question. So, Councillor Odie, if we could just jump to you quickly. You're muted again, sir. There we go. Sorry, thank you, Chair. Two things. Uh, I think Councillor Woodgate's point about supporting local businesses is a, is a very good one. Um, I, I've got questions with regards to ownership of the land um, and whether you know that, that that is something that I know we don't have any control of as a council as a town council but needs to be flagged up for districts and also potentially um, county council I think that if other restaurants are being charged for space outside on the high street and London Bar and Grill aren't that's going to cause massive problems I think um, so I think we just need to be wary of that if that's okay uh, but I think yeah. it's uh, I, I you know I think we need to do everything that we can, really. Yeah, I think that's a very valid point. I think it is at the moment it is publicly owned land. Uh, I don't think that should be given away to to to, to somebody. I think it could be a leasing arrangement should be put in place. Uh, Councillor the Bell, please. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, yeah, I think um, the situation is that it will remain the property, basically, or the the um, the gift of West Sussex. Um, I think it is, it is, personally, I think it's a move forward in that um, it, it brings our town alive during the summer. Uh, but uh, I, I, I do agree it's a very contentious issue. Uh, there are parking places opposite uh, for, for loading bays. And uh, the other point that, that I would make is that at the moment we seem to have a blight of people who know when um, the parking wardens are out, aren't around, and they park all up and down London Road, all over the place, uh, and it, it makes it extremely difficult to get by. But anything like this, uh, as Councillor Woodgate has said, to actually support the local businesses uh, to blossom, uh, especially after this time of uh, pandemic, I think is to be commended. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, but it, it will remain the property, I believe, of West Sussex. Um, and it is within the gift of going forward. And, uh, and indeed, personally, I would like to see more of our businesses coming out like this onto this particular wide area of London Road to be able to, to make it a little bit more attractive during the summer. But I think that Councillor Osborne would probably know a lot more about that uh, with regard to history than myself. And I would bow to uh, Councillor Dulio. I know he's itching to make some comments. Thank you. Okay, well, we've, we've got a bit of a queue forming here. We're going to go uh, uh, Councillor John Belsey, Councillor Mrs. Belsey, and then back to Dean. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, and I've had to look online at, at, at 
Uh, and like I have to say, I, I don't have a particular problem with the principle, although obviously I would like to see the report from West Sussex County Council confirming that they're happy from a highways perspective. I've seen that the divisional councillor, councillor Jackie Russell, is, uh, you know, happy um, to support. I suppose two of my concerns are, um, one is just that it's actually quite dominating. Um, I, it's very wide there, I appreciate, but it's also very long. Um, and the idea to me that they've got advertising all the way along um, the whole length of that thing is actually going to really dom it dominate the, um, uh, I think it, there's a risk that it would dominate the eye line. Um, and I, I, don't, I can't conceive any, any other business having such, you know, much longer than the length of their shop to have just to advertise themselves. And I think it, I, I don't think it's a very healthy situation for it to, to allow um, compared to other restaurants. The other, I, I, I really wouldn't have a problem with it outside their own, um, yeah, outside their own frontage. But just the fact that it goes on and on, um, you know, for example, what happens if some of the other, one of the other shops eventually becomes a restaurant over time or something, just the idea that they've got it permanently and no one else is ever uh, allowed to, um, yeah, to, to bid for it or uh, just doesn't fit very easily with me um, because up on the high street we would normally only allow restaurants to have stuff outside their own frontage or those flower beds where they're the nearest flower beds so just I, I am just concerned that we might be going a bit too far too soon to, to allow such a long stretch to go to uh, one particular restaurant and as I said I, I I would be concerned if they decided to put advertising all the way up there as well I would prefer the advertising to only be just outside their existing shop front um, and I, I think it could look very nice um, but as I said I just just uh, it, it, it grates me seeing those um, advertising signs all the way along as well so that would be so so I, I would be minded to suggest that they have just a bit outside outside the the restaurant um as a trial and see how it goes from that but i appreciate that might not be possible but that that will be my thoughts thank you thank you uh councillor mrs belsey thank you um it's really a question the outside sitting area is not really used between october and march is there not a consideration given that we for the busy period of the shops which is november december january that that actually could be used as a, a loading unloading bay and the um outside seating area be kept from the april through to october uh, as a area because it seems to me during the winter months that area is not going to be used i've walked along there although there's been tables out there's no one's been sitting out there is it not a, a, a question that we could ask whether it could be dual purpose because the no november december for the shops is very busy with lots of delivery um being required i just wondered if it had been looked at i think that's a, a very valid point i think part of this application is obviously the new in the introduction of the new curb which is will raise that 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 up which i think is partly a safety consideration um at the moment because it is a dropped curb down it is easier for cars to to mount rather than the the, the small the small curb um so i guess that could be a sticking point with this um but i do think that that uh, that councillor mr belsey's uh previous comment about this that the size of this was, was something of great concern to me um how far that went along and and how dominant that was to other units and them having it without anybody else being able to bid on that space i i think is also a great concern to me I think it should be divided more, more, more evenly, as you say. If British Heart Foundation went and it became a restaurant, then they should be allowed to have equal, equal rights to it. So I think the legalities of that usage need to be very carefully looked at. Although technically not a planning issue, I think that is something that we shouldn't just go gun ho into this. I mean, it looks awful at the moment with the with the orange bollards. I know why it was done last year with the pandemic, um, but I don't know if that should be. Our sympathies played on to just allow this without proper checks and balances. Uh, can I go to Councillor Dooley and then back to Councillor DeBell and then Councillor Woodgate? Um, 
thank you. I think you um, you kind of Councillor John Belsey and yourself have sort of stolen my thunder a bit. Is that what I was going to say previously was about the length of it, um, and the so so I totally agree. It just looks a bit too overbearing, and, and it's it's kind of stealing all that area. My other concern off the back of that was would be if you've you know if you've got a busy high street, which we will get busier high streets as the pandemic goes, it would feel a little bit like being herded through a very narrow area with lots of people sitting there, especially for that length of, of you know of area to sort of be walking through. It'd be you know for we get you know got quite a mature um, population in East Queens as well. It could be a bit of a daunting area to kind of walk through if you've got people sitting out there drinking at certain times of the day and. I'm sure it'd be very controlled, but I think it would just be a long, it's, it's just too long. I think outside of the building, I'd be, very, I'd be more supportive of. Um, and I think you're right, the, the kind of right legalities need to be put in place and the right sort of conditions need to be put in place. But it, I do feel we should be supporting the businesses, but I think it needs to be, as everyone's kind of put their point, it needs to be addressed on how, how this is managed and the size of this particular area is controlled. Well, that was just, just the thing I wanted to add previously, really. <laughs> uh, Councillor de Belden, Councillor Woodgate. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I totally uh, share the concerns. I think that we're, we're basically all in the same place on this. Uh, I would point out also that although it looks like a huge long line, uh, it's where the gentleman with the black hair and the beard poking up uh, as far as uh, British Heart Foundation, which, you, which we're talking about. And what I, what I would point out, it does stay um as part it, it, it actually belongs to uh west sussex and i think that they will need to continually monitor um the usage and i totally understand what uh councillor bells has said about uh, other people being allowed to use this area i see this personally i see this as a move forward to opening up our town center as indeed councillor woodgate said uh, to support our businesses uh, at a time during the summer. And indeed, as um, Councillor Mrs. Belsey said, um, the, the problem is that at the moment it looks terrible. Uh, you've got bollards that sort of uh, blanket off and that there, there is this, uh, we're on the cusp of an opportunity here to open up our town centre to be more useful during the summer more appropriate for all of us to be able to use. As I see it, uh, you may have different feelings, I totally understand that. Uh, and I totally understand and share your concerns to make sure that this works, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I believe that uh, only time will tell, uh, but I do believe that it will be watched very carefully uh, by West Sussex. And I would remember, I would remind you that um, Often during the day, there are people parking all over the place along here. Uh, I would dearly love to see that uh, removed and more businesses be allowed to be uh, to use the spaces outside uh, where they have um, restaurants and bars and things like that to really open up our town for local businesses be able, being able to use it uh, and make it a more joyous place for everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councillor Woodgate, please, maybe to, uh, to to put a final statement on it. Thank you, Chair. I, I was, when I basing my decision, I was just basing it on the use of the unloading bay, but the picture, you're quite right, does make it look exceptionally long and it does kind of go a little bit uh, quite a uh, way across Santander. It doesn't quite go as far, well, only slightly into um, British Heart Foundation. Um, I, I know I've, got, I've gone for approval. I'd still like to go for approval, but with the caveat that the, the space for them outside is for use for them. But if somebody comes along next door that's not Santander and wants to use it, that space should be allowed. I don't. It should be gifted to a London Bar and Grill and then reviewed when when and if other tenants come along. I, um, whether I can change that, I don't know, but um, I would like to put that forward. I think we've got no problem adding that. And I, I would actually push for an annual review of the usage. Yep, um, be, be, because I think I think it needs to be looked at very carefully because otherwise five, six years could go past and then it just becomes a, a thing. Well, I think an, an annual review of it, 
and for pedestrian safety, for if it has increased difficulty with loading. Um, I really don't think, and this isn't against London Road Bar and Grill, this is I don't think any business should get favoured use of public space freely. Um, maybe, maybe also the depth of the um, external seating area should be looked at. Maybe we they could narrow that down slightly to a table that seats a table of four easily, but widens the um, the, the the pathway a little better because uh, I, I like Councillor Dooley was quite right with it. It could be quite intimidating in the evening to sort of squeeze past there. So maybe they could the the share could be split slightly better to uh, allow it a bit more openness. Okay, all right, well, thank you very much. I and mean, I think something that could be addressed maybe is even with, um, I'm just thinking about the, 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 the use that Councillor Mrs. Belsey brought in about how it's not used in the, yep. uh, the winter months. That could be brought in with a licensing application for when it's actually allowed licensed to be, to be used for, for that, that you could, you could put a licensing use on it. That it's only licensed between certain times and at certain hours. So that might be a way of getting around it. Um, Counts, uh, Town Clerk, um, just with a thumbs up, you can say, are you happy with all the, with that, with those comments that, that Councillor Woodgate and the rest have, have put forward to add to it? Um, yes, I am Chairman, but very quickly just to add that this is only part of the story and you've just alluded to licensing. The, the District Council at the moment, we, normally it would be West Sussex, but currently it's Mid Sussex, are the ones who are allowing the extension of the licenses out of the front of the building. So they will be looking at that. And a quick comment that anybody can apply for planning application. So if another shop does go in next door and turns into a restaurant, they can always apply for planning. And then the issue becomes one of licensing and not planning. Thank you. Uh, with all that in mind, can we uh, then take it to the vote for recommending approval with all the terms we've done? So can I show our hands, please? Thank you. It's been a long meeting tonight, guys. You're doing really well. Keep the energy uh, energy up. Oh, God, I sound like a Peloton instructor. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, right. DM twenty one zero six seven four. This is seven uh, Harvest Hill. This is single story extension with pitched roof uh, to existing dormer. Um, so this is the, the current property. Here it shows the yellow new bit. Um, here is the, the existing front, side and rears. And the new proposed rear extension and new, new look at the front. Um, Heron Tai, Councillor Odi, please. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I, I don't have a problem with this uh, at all. Um, I think it's uh, making something actually turn quite nice from the front now with the uh, with the, the, the pitched roof. Um, so I would uh, recommend approval. Thank you. Could I have a, a second for that, please? Councillor Scott, any further comments on that at all? No, I agree with the comments. It's good. And I would show hands and support them, please. Thank you. Uh, next one is DM21-0713. <laughs> this is an LDC. Please for noting. Noted. Noted. I would really like to, to, to say that the note that has been put on, on part of this by the town clerk, which if anyone has actually read what this LDC is, is installation of substation to facilitate residential conversion of office building, which um, seems a bit rich before the planning is approved. <laughs> Not the whole horse. Um, last on the night is DM21-0717, which is the former telephone exchange building, which we've discussed a couple of times before on Nimblehorn Lane. This is a variation of condition two relating to planning application DM20-2761 to revise the drawings for the amendment to the window placement on the south elevation, including the addition of two roof lights and alternative roof tiles also proposed. So this is basically a small extra window, two little roof lights and a slightly different roof tile. This is in Bohol. This is tucked next to the car park. I've got no problem with it. Um, so I'll recommend 
uh, approval. Uh, a second. Yep. Any further comments at all, committee? Okay, can I have a show of hands and support? Okay. Well done, committee. You slogged your way through that. You did really well. Thank you for some really good debate, really good points there. You've done brilliantly. Um, and may I say a word in a minute after you finish, please? You can. I would like to recommend that the planning committee, next planning committee, will be held on the 29th of March. Um, and I'd like to close the meeting at 8.46.